Okay, hello everyone. This is Victor Momo from Excel Moments. If you've been following my channel and you've watched my last video on the true and false Excel oddity, you remember that I said I was going to do something on the filter function and apply the Excel oddity. What's this Excel oddity? Is that when we think of true and false, we always think of one and zero, but Excel thinks of any non-zero number and zero. So false is zero, but any non-zero number is considered as true. Okay, that's the point. And I'm just going to show, you know, one or two ways it's applied in the filter function. Okay, that's what this video is about. And there's an X lookup. Oh, yeah, yes, always some X lookup hiding in there. So there's some X lookup you would see, but I think I won't let it cut out of the bag for now. Let's get into the filter function. Okay, so um, do I make the assumption that we know the filter function? I could partially make the assumption. But the point being that if you've ever used the filter feature in Excel, you know what a filter is, right? Like a funnel also is going to let some things through, some other things will not be able to pass through. So if you want to filter and say, oh, I'm not interested in seeing the entire data set. I just want to see for one department. You know, you could put a filter here, right? You want to check all of the, you know, department, select the one you're interested in. Okay? And you know, that's fine, right? Okay? So you could decide to do that. But what you're doing in this case is rather than, you know, using the filter feature, you're using the filter function, which makes it really dynamic. Okay, so it can respond to different criteria and change as necessary, right? So let me show you a basic filter function, maybe just repeating the same thing I just did. Filter by department, department finance. Some call it finance, some say finance, okay whichever, but you know what I'm referring to. Okay, so I'm going to do the filter function. Let's assume I take the entire data set. I'm interested in the entire data set. I'm going to leave this serial number column. And it's just there for fun. So let's take this as my data set. So that's my array, right? So now it means that because I wanted to return all these columns, so that's why I'm selecting the entire thing. So my include is really just a criteria. Everybody says that returns true, false. Most people also say that returns one, zero. But I make the point it doesn't have to be one zero. It just needs to be any number and zero. Okay? But I'm not going to show that in this example. In the next one, this one is just like, well, just giving you an idea. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to test. My criteria is going to be I select all these departments. And you know, for the dimensions of the array, they have to be consistent. So I test if this is equals to, you know, finance, right? Okay? So... Uh, I'm going to highlight this portion so everybody can see what's going on there. So you can see that everywhere it's not equal to finance, it's false. And then everywhere it's finance, it's what's true, right? So that's really what you need. So you need either a true false or as people will say, one zero. I'm going to disprove that, you know, and they're fine. And you can close the bracket, right? And you can see that only those in the finance department are written, right? So it's that simple. I'm not going to talk you know now about the last criteria which is if empty but it probably is you know self-explanatory if it's empty it doesn't return anything what do you want to see simply like your if error right so now let's take this portion out okay no I just did it the first one <laughs> yeah so now let's take another example in this one i want to filter this data you know where the gender is male or the age is greater than 50. note what i said not and I said gender is male or the age is greater than 50, meaning that the person could be male and less than 50, that's fine. The person could be greater than 50 and not male, that's still fine. It's different from if it's an and, it means that both criteria must be satisfied. So how do we address this one? We're going to pull up the filter function. I'm going to do the same thing, erase everything here, right? Okay, and then for my criteria, which is like my include here, I'm going to select them in bits. So I'm going to handle the first one first. The first one is to test if the gender is male. So I'm going to select this cell, Control shift down. Yeah, making it absolute doesn't change much in this case, but well, we're used to it, so we might as well just do it. So I test if this is equals to, let me just point to this cell. Here. So this is going to give me true, false, true, false, correct? Now, because it's an or, I'm just going to add. So or is additive, and this multiplicative. It was and, I would have put a times there. Okay, so and then the second criteria I want to test is the age, right? So I select the age, and I say, for example, I just say greater than 15. Uh, you, can, you know, put 15 in a cell and point to it, but well, you get the point here. Now, let's see what this expression is giving us. 
Okay, you can see that we have zeros, ones, and twos. Zeros, it means that none of the criteria was satisfied. One means one of them was satisfied. Either one, either the gender or the age. Two means that both of them are satisfied. At this point, what most people will do is, oh, because I want to test, you know, which ones are satisfied and which ones are not satisfied, I will do something like greater than zero. So if I do greater than zero, all the ones that are one and two will be true. Then the one that is zero will obviously be false. But you don't need to do that. So long as you have zero as false, the one and the twos are true. So I close my bracket at this point. Oh, sorry. I deselected. It wasn't looking. Okay. I close my bracket and enter. Now let's look at our results. Our result shows us that we can see males. And once they are males, they don't necessarily have to be what? As in above 50. Okay. But you notice that every female has to be above 50 because that's the only way they can pass one of the criteria. It's an all. See the female? You see the female? You see the female? So it does exactly what you want. And you didn't have to return exactly a true or false or a one zero. What you just did was to make sure that false was zero and every other thing, you know, was fine. Okay, good. So point made on this one. Let's go to the next one. The next one is where we get to choose, you know, the columns we want to return, right? This is a very interesting one. I'm going to just put a simple filter because the fun um, the this is not really about you know the filter function now. It's about really selectively returning columns. So my filter here is going to be a simple one. First of all, I'm just going to select um, you know um, location as London. So let me set that up. But because that's not my focus, I'm just going to do that quickly. Here you could do Control Shift End, right? But that will take you to you know some other columns you don't want. So you probably want to do right and down right and then my criteria here is going to be that my location is equals to london that's it right okay so now we have what we want okay but the next part is where we can now selectively you know um you know pick the columns we want to see right so what you do for this one is very simple you just nest it you put another filter and after the filter so what i'm going to do is i'm going to put a filter here right so this you are seeing here is the result of the inner filter. Now I'm going to put another filter and then for my criteria, it's just representing each of the columns by either, most people will say here, one or zero. So anyone that is one, yeah, will give you, um, you know, will be returned. Anyone that is zero will not be returned. But because I'm talking about the Excel oddity of true and false, I'm making the point here that it doesn't have to be one, zero or true, false. It just needs to be anything and zero. Okay, so what I've decided to do is I've decided to use these numbers here as my include criteria. As you can see, some of them are one, some are zero, some are some other numbers. And let's see if it works. You see that everywhere where I had a non-zero number was returned. Okay, so you can see that these two, higher location and higher date and location rather, because they are both zero and department, the three of them are not returned. Even the gender that is three was returned, age that is seven was returned. If I change employee ID to minus 2000.34, whatever, something, something, it's still returned. Let me try and put a header here so that we can see what's going on. So I'm going to put a filter just so that I could get my headers to select this, and then I select this as my criteria. Right. Okay, so what it means here is that every one that is zero is false, every other is true. Okay, so you see it now, right? So if I change this now to zero, last name is off interesting thing you delete it too it's the same thing so if you delete it it's considered to be zero right so all the zeros are gone the only thing you have are those that are non-zero so you can see that i'm not trying to get one and zero i'm not trying to get true or false i'm just trying to get zero and any other thing and it works perfectly and that way you can select the columns you want let me show you something interesting in google sheets Somebody's like, Google Sheets? So this is Excel. Well, both of them have Sheets, S-H-E-E-T-S. Just so it's not misconstrued. Okay, so now um, Google Sheets has um, something interesting, which is data validation using uh, checkboxes. And I, I find it to be really cool. Um, so for this, you can select you know, your checkboxes. And then you say, okay, if I have a checkbox, I want it to be true when checked. I want it to be false when unchecked. You can do anything. You can do yes, no. You know, but for ease, for me, I just felt, okay, why not just do true, false? 
So this is more maybe visually appealing. So you can check, uncheck. So everyone I unchecked will not show up in my final, you know, filter, right? So I'm just doing pretty much the same logic anyway, you know, but I just wanted to show this. It just looks kind of cool, right? I think. <laughs> okay, so now the uh, last example, right? And this, um, the, the inspiration for this was a video I watched um, by who? Yes, his name is I hope. Gaspar, I'm not sure of his son name, so I'm not going to attempt to pronounce it, but he runs Excel Olympics. He's, um, he's an Excel MVP. That video is really, really cool. Uh, you should watch it. You should watch it. Yes. So he did something really cool. Um, he used, you know, filter and offset function. I'm going to use a different function, but yeah, I think the inspiration for this was from that video. And thanks, Gaspar, for that. I'm going to use... Well, let me not say what I'm going to use. Let me explain what the problem is, and then I'll tell you what I'll use. But those who know already know. Okay, so now, um, you know, you, if you notice the way I've been writing my filters, well, the same way I just write the filter, and then I select, okay, if it's I'm going to be, uh, you know, gender, I just go and I select the gender column for the criteria and say gender equals to this. If it's department, I go and I select the department. You know, but now, you want to make it a little more dynamic. I'll say user friendly. Others can use it, and your filter can respond, you know, to their choices. So, I've done here um, included a list of all the columns in here as a drop down. Okay, I mean that's not a big deal anyway. Anybody can do that. Okay, so right, so you can select, you know, um, any of the um, columns here. Right, and when you select the column, okay, so it's kind of dependent drop down. But there's something cool about dependent drop downs now in Excel, but I'm not going to talk about that. Maybe in my next video, who knows? <laughs> so when I select location, then I get a unique list of locations, right? Okay, so it means that with the way this is set up, I can't, you know, in my criteria say, oh, location, you know, I select the location and say equals to Houston, for example. Why? Because Tomorrow, somebody is just going to select a different thing here and change it from location to department. And that messes up, you know, my uh, filter. So what I need to be able to do is when somebody selects a column here, I need to be able to figure out what column that is and, you know, select the appropriate column. Like I said, um, Casper used filter and offset. Very cool. I'm going to use the XLOOKUP. Yes, I love the XLOOKUP function. And I think Oz already said that, right? But I don't just use the XLOOKUP everywhere. I use it where it can be used because I know here, yeah, XLOOKUP returns a range of a reference, and it's it's going to come in really handy here. So this is what we are going to do. We're going to do filter, right? And then we select our array. This is our array for the filter, let's see, right? And we then go to the criteria part. But the criteria part, first of all, is we want to test that whatever column is selected here, you know, is equals to this criteria. But how do we get the column? XLOOKUP. So I'm going to do XLOOKUP. And say, what am I looking up? I'm looking up whatever column name I have here. In this case, location. Where am I going to look it up? I'm going to look it up in these headers, right? Okay, I'm going to look it up in these headers. And then what am I going to return? I'm going to return this entire array. What this means is that if it looks for location, it's going to check. It's going to find it here, right? And when it finds it here, it means it's going to return all this as, you know, the result. Because XLOOKUP returns a reference. Well, not a value, right? So it's going to return everything here. Right. If you don't believe me, let's see what it returns. Let's just do an F9 here. You see that? So those are all your locations. And it means that once you change this to, you know, um, a different column, it's going to respond accordingly. So now I'm testing that all those entries, which obviously are, you know, the column I'm interested in, is equal to whatever the criteria is here. Right? That's all. Okay? Yeah. So let me be, I take this down. All right. Okay. So, and you can see that now we have Houston, right? So this is all Houston. If this changes tomorrow to department and uh, let's say human resources, you know, it responds accordingly. Of course, I mean, you notice that once I changed um, this and there was no return entry, for example, I had a calc error. This is where the if empty argument, right? So the third argument, this is where this comes in handy. You can then put a descriptive text there if you want, okay, to say, oh, well, I'm going to get around it just because there are no entries to return. So I select something and I have it there, right? So now you can see this part. But what I'll just do now is to fuse it again with, you know, the uh, selective column selection. <laughs> you know, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put another filter, 
I'm just going to put another filter. So I'm doing like two things in one, making the columns as in like the criteria you're selecting the data from dynamic and at the same time deciding which columns you want to, you know, um, including your results. So from this, I'm going to just select this as, you know, this for me, I want to use that as my uh, you know, include condition. So it means that anyone that is blank or zero is false, it's not going to show up. Anyone that is any other number is going to show up. Okay, right, something like that. Yeah, so you can see that the only things I have are higher dates, gender, and age. All right, so maybe I just put, you know, for the header here. So I just do that for the header. So I select this just so that I have headers that kind of correspond to what I'm doing. Right, everybody fine? Okay, good. So now I can just put some numbers here. Maybe employee ID, I put one, you know, then first name, I put one. I take out this, put the location the department take out the age you know but i could use any number i could have used three four you know, they would still work right so i think that's really what i wanted to show in this video you know um a few things here right that one when you do like maybe an all criteria in the, um you know in the filter you don't need to try to get zero and one you know just get zero for the false every other is considered true um then you can use the same concept to in deciding the columns you want to show um, you may not have to be true false or one zero it just needs to be zero for false meaning i don't want to see those columns any other number i want to see those columns okay and that kind of works well and then of course i just have to fuse x lookup in there to make it really really dynamic okay but like i said in the video on the excel auditing it's an interesting thing to know but it could also be risky so you need to know when to apply it and when not to apply it right so that you don't get into a lot of trouble but like i say sometimes it's good to know these things that exist and you could also use it you know to your advantage so if you like this video please hit the like button you could also subscribe to the channel excel moments for now i'm out